So we've just had the Queen's speech of 2022. This is my reaction as to what it means for property investors, for buy to let investors, and also for property developers. So stay tuned. Hi, my name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing and developing properties for the last 30 years. You may have seen me on the hit Sky TV show, Property Elevator, or attended one of our central London property investors networking events, the Baker Street Property Meet. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more about that later on. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon because we put out content each and every week, all dedicated to keeping you on top of your property investors game. So the Queen's speech happened today. Um, Her Majesty is unfortunately ill. She's got mobility issues. Prince Charles did the speech instead. Quite frankly, he looked a little bit bored, actually. I mean, the Queen's speech, as we know, is written by the government. So Boris Johnson's folks have basically written down the government's agenda for this next session of Parliament, and all Charles did was read it out. Um, quite frankly, he looked uh, a little bit um, uninterested or uninspired by the words. And to be honest with you, I kind of agree with him. Um, it was full of waffle and twaddle, but there were some key points that really mean something for you guys, for us guys, as property investors and developers. So I'm gonna show you what was actually said by Prince Charles and then explain what it means for property investors. So there are four things that are gonna affect us guys. Um, what was said on inflation, what was said on invigorating local areas and the high streets, um, what was said about uh, planning reform and giving local authorities and local people more powers, um, and also what was said about strengthening tenants' rights. If you like the content we put out, please show your appreciation by smashing that like button. Tell me what you think about uh, what was said in the Queen's speech in the comments below. Before I get going, I just want to tell you about the Baker Street Property Meet. It is the UK's largest property investors networking meet, which takes place each and every month in central London. This month's meeting is 25th of May, Wednesday, 25th of May. It starts at 6 p.m. Um, it's in central London. The details are on bakerstreetpropertymeet.com. Tickets are selling out uh, like hotcakes, I should say. Last month, we had 350 people attend our event. So make sure you book your ticket now for this month's extravaganza. Okay, what did Prince Charles say on inflation? Of course, inflation affects property investors. And I did a video on uh, what inflation means. I'll put a link to it up there. But let's just listen to what was in the Queen's speech. Her Majesty's ministers will support the Bank of England to return inflation to its target. Okay, a little bit vague there, but basically uh, what they're saying is the government is going to support the Bank of England in bringing inflation back to target. What does that mean? What the tool does the Bank of England have? Of course, it's the ability to set uh, interest rates and to raise and lower them as it sees fit. Now, the thing is with inflation, a lot of the inflation that we have is to do with supply side. It's because commodity prices have increased so much the world over. And also, of course, energy prices, as we know, energy prices have shot up. So when the Bank of England is looking to uh, sort of dampen things down a little bit, it doesn't actually have to raise interest rates too much uh, to have the effect because the rising prices and energy costs and commodity co prices that's happening anyway, that's happening the world over, is doing, um, is doing its job for the Bank of England. So my prediction is, yes, interest rates will rise a little bit, but we won't see them rise too much. What do I mean by too much? Well, subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'll be releasing a video very, very shortly as to how high I think interest rates will go in the UK and exactly why that's the case and what you need to do now to plan for that. So what does this speech actually mean? Well, before, the, before this Queen's speech, there was a lot of uh, leaks and information in the press about how local authorities are going to be given the powers to basically seize uh, shops from landlords um, and rent them out if they're vacant for, say, more than 12 months. Now, no one exactly knows how such a scheme could possibly work, it sounds very, very communist, if you like, in its whole nature, uh, but it is um, fraught with problems. 
You know, it is very, very simple, for example, for a landlord to simply rent it out to one of their other businesses. There are just so many ways around it. It would be a policy that's full of holes. Now, I'm wondering whether the government have had a little rethink. There's been a little pushback on what a nonsense policy this would be. I mean, it's obvious that they're just pandering to the voter and trying to do something. But if you think about it, if you're in a desolate area, somewhere up north, Blackpool or whatever, where um, a lot of people don't have a bean, and there are empty shops all over the place, then why does anyone want to rent out that shop? It's not the landlord's fault. The landlord is not purposely keeping that shop empty, are they? Why would they do that? So they're trying to beat the wrong person up uh, for the problem, which is there are just too many uh, shops in the UK for the way people are living right now. One thing this will do, of course, is accelerate the repurposing of retail units to alternative uses, whether they're alternative um, commercial uses or either fully or partially converting them to residential use using the new permitted development rights, which allow you to do this in a simplified way without going through convoluted planning. Once again, this is something that I run regular free masterclasses on, uh, live masterclasses on, and you can sign up for one of those sessions to find out more about the opportunities for repurposing commercial properties on one of those sessions. I'll leave the link on the screen below. So to summarise, before the Queen's speech, they trailed all sorts of powers that they're going to give local authorities for, for basically um, taking properties from landlords which have been vacant for a long time and then renting them out, particularly high street properties. Uh, I think we're going to see a huge amount of resistance to that. The measures will be watered down simply because what was trailed before the speech is quite frankly impractical, immoral and unimplementable. Tell me what you think in the comments below. And if you're getting value from this video, of course, smash that like button. And then Charlie went on to talk about the planning system and planning reforms. Let's see what he said. A bill will be brought forward to drive local growth, empowering local leaders to regenerate their areas and ensuring everyone can share in the United Kingdom's success. The planning system will be reformed to give residents more involvement in local development. Oh wow, this old chestnut again. I mean, you know, this is the NIMBY's charter, isn't it? I mean, oh, every old granny and curtain twitcher across the land will be delighted with that one because they can finally stick their beak where it's not wanted in your and my development proposals to basically do some good and provide some new housing in the UK. I think uh, the Conservatives have got had a massive kick in the teeth recently at the Amersham and Chesham by-election, um, which was um, held in April uh, 2022, and they lost. Uh, it, the Amersham and Chesham seat has never, ever, ever uh, gone, been anything other than Conservative, but it went switched to the Lib Dems, um, and that was partly because of the Matt Hancock fiasco, which blew up right in the middle of that um, by-election. But also, there was some serious local resistance to planning and building in the Green Belt. And I think the Tories have just taken a little bit of a um, shock, really, at their Amersham and Chesham defeat. And they're wondering how much of their core voters and their core constituencies actually are bothered about building in Green Belt and building houses all over the place. And I think they're just doing something to appease these guys. But what they're going to do, I don't exactly know. I'm not sure whether this is just pandering to the electorate or whether it actually means something substantial. Because under the planning system, which of course is an absolute dog's breakfast and it doesn't work and it's unfit for purpose, um, there are already plenty of opportunity for local busybodies to stick their oars in and prevent or delay you significantly from doing what you want as a developer. But what is that going to mean for you guys? Well, what that's going to mean is planning is going to be even more a pain in the neck than it already is. So it's going to be something that you're not going to want to do because it's uncertain, the outcome is uncertain, the time it will take is also uncertain, and the costs 
of dealing with all these NIMBY objections and having reports to justify anything that you want to do, professional reports and all of that, will increase the cost of getting a planning application through. And that will further make permitted development schemes more attractive. Permitted development is a light touch planning system. Um, basically, the local busybodies cannot poke their oars in. Uh, they have no say in permitted development schemes. So basically, permitted development is national. It's a set of criteria that if you follow and you tick the boxes in that criteria, the council, the local authority cannot stop you from carrying out that development. Now, I used to do a lot of planning projects. I gave up because of all the problems I just uh, said. And now we pretty much do exclusively permitted development. Because if you want to do a, a proposal, a, a development scheme under permitted development, it typically takes 56 days to get your permission granted by the council. And that means you're good to go. It takes out the uncertainty. Uh, it's reduced time frame to get your permission. So therefore, it's less costly. But tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you think there's going to be any substance behind uh, these words that Charlie uttered? Now, the final thing that affects property investors and developers, particularly affects buy-to-let investors, is what Charles had to say on tenants' rights. Let's have a listen. Her Majesty's Government will introduce legislation to improve the regulation of social housing, to strengthen the rights of tenants, and ensure better quality, safer, Homes. Okay, what's that going to mean? Well, strengthen the rights of tenants. The big thing that's going to be happening in this parliament is a bill to abolish Section 21 notices. Uh, and that's what he's talking about there. Now, Section 21 notices are, is the mechanism that a landlord can use to bring to an end a assured shorthold tenancy agreement uh, without the tenant... Um, having any fault. So basically, a tenant can have a minimum of six months in the property, and then, if, and then if the landlord requires possession of his property back, he can serve a Section 21 notice. Now, let's just go back in time a little bit. Section 21 notices were brought in along with the Assured Shorthold Tenancy Agreement in 1985 by Margaret Thatcher, and that was because before Margaret Thatcher brought in those rules, um, tenancies were an absolute pain in the neck, basically. Um, tenants had all the rights and landlords virtually exited the market. There were very few of them left and there was a massive shortage of rental housing. So what was brought in was the Assured Shorthold Tenancy Agreement with the ability for the landlord to get possession of the property by serving a Section 21 notice. This security of tenure also encouraged buy-to-let lenders to start getting involved and offering mortgages because they had security um, that they could get the property back if it all went uh, belly up. If Section 21 notices are removed, then what that means is that if you want to call a tenancy to an end, you will have to have specific grounds. Specific grounds such as the tenant hasn't paid their rent, or uh, there's breached some conditions in the contract, or perhaps the landlord wishes to move into the property themselves. Um, and by the way, it's highly likely that's going to only be allowed for properties held uh, outside of limited companies, in other words, by personal individuals, um, and also if the landlord wishes to sell the property. So there'll be a few grounds on which you'll be able to uh, repossess, but you won't be able to just say, look, um, I'm not giving a reason, um, I want my property back. Now, sometimes proving fault can be very, very sticky. For example, in rent arrears, you know, if um, rent arrears build up and you want to take someone to court to get the property back and then they pay right up until the last minute, then there's nothing you can do. They've paid up and then they stop paying again and then you have to go to court again and the cycle can continue. So what I think is going to happen is that landlords are going to get a lot stricter of the kind of tenants that they accept. We're going to see a lot more landlords only rent to A1 tenants who come up with absolutely perfect references. Uh, and also, and where the references aren't perfect, then the landlords will insist on a guarantor. A guarantor who's a homeowner who will basically stand by uh, the tenant if anything goes wrong. And quite frankly, 
savvy landlords are already doing this right now. So, the, so this year's Queen's speech was relatively so, short, but in this video what I've tried to do is tease out the key things and how they impact you as property investors, property developers and, or buy-to-let landlords. Tell me what you think of what I said in the comments below. Basically, there's a lot of change happening over the next year for the world of property, property investors, property developers, buy-to-let landlords, a huge amount of change. If you want to keep up to date with the latest goings on, you're going to be subscribed to this channel. But you also will want to come and join us at our monthly property investors networking meetings in central London. The next one is 25th of May. The Baker Street Property Meet is the largest property networking event in the UK. 350 people came to our last month's meet. You're going to want one of the last few tickets for this month's meet uh, and you can get them at BakerStreetPropertyMeet.com. So I'll see you there. That's all for this video. Bye for now. High streets across the land are changing forever. Basically, there's an oversupply of retail premises. Shops are closing down, more are going to close down in the future. The government know this, and that's why they've introduced, or they're introducing, a light touch planning system, which allows small developers to easily repurpose these buildings to residential use under a light touch planning regime called permitted development. Now, this is going to be the biggest revolution uh, and the biggest change and the biggest opportunity for property investors um, that I've ever seen and this is all coming into effect on 1st of August so you need to know what's happening and what properties to look for to take advantage of these opportunities so that you can get in there and take that first mover advantage. I've got a 90 minute free masterclass to get you ready for August the 1st. Make sure you join me, click the link below. Whether you're a beginner or expert, we'll get you started.